Vampire Xenomorph Origins. Explore. This crossover might be unheard of, and to some, it may even seem unlikely. But aliens and vampires surprisingly make for a great story when put together. Alien slash Vampirilla is a six-issue limited crossover comic book series published by Dynamite Entertainment and Dark Horse Comics in 2015 and 2016. There have been several crossovers with Xenomorphs, but this particular one might be one of the more promising ones. There is no doubt that Vampirilla has had a range of crossovers, even with characters like Betty and Veronica from the Archie comics. However, this crossover takes the cake. This six-part comic series primarily focuses on Vampirilla and Lars, who make their way through a base on Mars which Xenomorphs have infected. This comic series has a little bit of everything and might be the perfect crossover series if you want to learn about Xenomorphs or Vampirilla. Beware though, this comic series might send you down a rabbit hole of comics. Let's begin with the thrill ride right away though, shall we? Before we get into our explanation, we do have a small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. So thank you, and let's begin. The creation of the Xenomorph Vampire Hybrid. The first issue begins with two hooded figures being chased by a Xenomorph in what can be called one of the best opening action sequences illustrated in the history of Xenomorph crossover comics. One of them finally reveals itself as a vampire, trying its best to fight the Xenomorph but failing miserably as its face melts off because of the Xenomorph and its acidic blood. Meanwhile, somewhere on Mars, a ship is approaching, and Vampirilla is on board. We cut to the Mars Colony Station, where we are introduced to more characters. This time around, they are humans. They discuss how they needed to be on their best behavior, and are still in disbelief that Vampirilla was somebody beyond just a myth that they had once heard of. It is hinted that the ship is approaching them with Vampirilla and possibly other vampires in it, and how their colony station was built on top of something that might have been important to the vampires. Vampirilla enters the station, and they all surround her, ensuring she is comfortable and has everything she needs. This might be one of the rare occasions that we don't see Vampirilla in her iconic costume or spacesuit instead. She reassures the people and begins to praise them for discovering what might be the most important find of the century. They tell her about the base that they have found underneath, the one that they are on, and how it might be centuries old, and only Vampirilla can tell them more about it and help investigate further. Before they can discuss it further, we are finally introduced to everyone there, including Tucker, Lars, Jake, Seuss, and Vicky. Vampirilla assures them that she will only be staying for a few days as they prepare themselves to explore what's underneath. As the much-do exploration begins, Vampirilla realizes that something isn't right about the place. And while the people on the walls might be dead, this place wasn't built by Nosferatu. She concludes that these vampires weren't hibernating here, but instead they were attacked, and not by something that was human, Soon, they spot a nest of egg-like things, again, not belonging to humans or vampires, which only makes them more curious and careful at the same time. However, the reader knows that these are ovomorphs. Vampirilla knows better and tells them that they must seal the entire area off. Still, before they can, the eggs break open, revealing small yet deadly alien creatures facehuggers that will later transform into xenomorphs that begin to attack the crew and Vampirilla. Soon after, the facehuggers fall to the ground as everyone gains consciousness, realizing that they have been down there for about 26 hours. Lars admitted to having sealed the door and refused an evacuation team and a medic because he didn't want to infect the base with whatever was down there. The rest of the team isn't pleased with his decision making. They soon realize that they are stuck down there, but before they can discuss the issue further, they all begin coughing, and Vampirilla spurts out blood and what looks like a chest burster, bringing the first issue of the comic to an end. As the second issue begins, we are taken back to the colony station on Mars, where the rest are discussing Lars's promotion and then wondering if anyone was able to get through to him. Lars begins to help Vampirilla, who survives the attack and starts healing. However, to be fully healed, 
She needs blood. Lars is apprehensive about letting Vampirilla feast on him, but he also realizes that this is possibly the only chance of surviving whatever is down there. With a brief apology, Vampirilla bites down on his neck. The fear in his eyes is evident, but with a dead crew, this was their only option. Meanwhile, at the base, the rest are beginning to worry about what had happened and finally manage to get a view of the base below. They are shocked to see most of the crew dead and blood everywhere. They get in touch with Lars who reassures them that he is okay but Vampirilla isn't doing great now. The crew have a hard time believing him because Vampirilla was meant to be a strong vampire and they also doubt that maybe she was behind all of this. However, the truth was that these creatures weakened Vampirilla, and even Lars's blood didn't help her. While the others at the base arm themselves to try to rescue Lars and Vampirilla, the two are still downstairs, worried about how this alien species has caused so much damage as babies, and what they might be capable of as they grow. Nevertheless, Vampirilla does her best to calm Lars down, assuring him that everything will soon be over. As they make themselves more comfortable, waiting for the time lock to end, the armed Martians burst in, immediately targeting their weapons at Vampirilla. Lars quickly asks them to back off, understanding that they have the wrong idea. Before they can have a calm conversation, a huge xenomorph presents itself, attacking everyone, which should be enough for them to believe that Vampirilla wasn't the villain here. Should they make it out alive? Vampirilla and Lars manage to escape as she grabs him by his hood and flies away with the help of her wings and lands on a surface away from the xenomorph. As the two of them find a hiding place, Lars is ridden with guilt when he thinks back to how Tucker didn't believe him and was ready to attack Vampirilla. But once again, she reassures Lars that this was in no way his fault. Vampirilla then talks about her kind and how everyone assumes that they are all monsters. But in reality, neither Lars nor his team should fear Vampirilla and she could only hope he believes her. Before Lars can respond, he looks around where they are hiding, spotting several dead bodies some hanging above, and the horrors have only just begun. We are taken back to the station at the beginning of the third issue, where the crew monitoring the base are beyond stressed when the live feed goes out, and all they have is footage from the last few seconds, which only scares them when they realize that the creature attacking them is far from human. Even after seeing a clear picture of the xenomorph, Tucker thinks that this creature might be Vampirilla, considering everything that has gone wrong has happened after she arrived on Mars. Meanwhile, Lars inspects a pile of dead bodies, thoroughly creeped out by the sight, while Vampirilla is simply indifferent towards it. Vampirilla tells him that they must try their best to get out of here, and Lars has the idea of trying to make the view screen work so that they can see what they might be up against. They eventually manage to get it working after using the batteries from the flashlight, which were meant to be a great power source. They finally manage to get some footage of the things that escalated down there, mainly consisting of vampires being hunted by xenomorphs, just as we see at the beginning of the first comic. Meanwhile, another ship approaching Mars, including Lars's wife, has been asked to stop where they are because of some infestation until they can get it under control. However, Sarah, Lars's wife, is determined to check out whatever is happening and even volunteers to go down there with an evacuation team so the ship doesn't have to land on Mars. Meanwhile, Tucker is trying to think of solutions, including getting rid of the base below, potentially flooding it with something toxic. Tucker talks about how the space is harsh and everyone knows the risk when they join the missions. If he had to sacrifice Lars and Vampirilla for the safety of everyone else on Mars, he would probably consider it. Tucker even has some things mapped out in his mind already, one that includes the vents of the base below and a leak which could create a toxic fog of ammonia which should be enough to destroy the entire base. Tucker is quick to label this as self-defense and not murder. Meanwhile, Lars and Vampirilla are trying to figure out ways to get out of there, while also forging weapons should they need to fight these monsters again. It isn't long after that, a xenomorph attacks Vampirilla, but before they can do anything, toxic gas starts pouring through the vents, which forces them to escape yet again making their way to a room without any vents. They only make the cut as some acid from the xenomorph enters, 
waking a sleeping vampire and killing it. Lars and Vampirilla are confused about where they are, but know that there are other vampires deep in slumber. Soon after, the door starts melting and they realize that one xenomorph has escaped from the base through a tunnel. The comic ends with a woman witnessing the xenomorph. The fourth issue of the comic series takes place somewhere on Mars, where two people find the dead body of the woman who saw the xenomorph in the previous issue. Her eyes are still wide and her guts spilt everywhere. Meanwhile, Tucker wonders if his plan has worked and how they must retrieve Lars's body so his wife has something to say goodbye to. Neither Tucker nor Norm has told the rest of the crew about what they have done. Now Tucker expects Norm to suit up and wander down to the base to make sure that the threat has been eliminated. If this comic series wasn't about evil xenomorphs, it could be about evil Tucker. Back in the sealed room, Lars and Vampirilla have almost accepted their fate, but Vampirilla isn't one to back down as she figures a way out that doesn't involve facing the xenomorphs or their acidic blood. With the help of her wings, they try and make their way out through the tunnel, but the ruthless xenomorph crawls through her wing, resulting in excruciating pain. Despite this, they make their way through the tunnel, reaching the part of Mars where the woman was killed earlier. Vampirilla and Lars decide to find a hiding place as the remaining xenomorphs make their way onto the ship. Vampirilla wishes her wing wasn't injured, and this time Lars offers his blood to speed her healing process, but she refuses, worried that he might not live to tell the tale if she does feed on him. There's a sense of relief when Lars and Sarah are finally able to connect, and Sarah asks him about what's going on, clearly worried sick about her husband. Lars and Sarah both discuss everything that happened, and Lars is visibly upset by Tucker and the fact that Tucker is willing to sacrifice Lars. However, Lars and Vampirilla must hurry as the line cuts off, leaving Sarah even more worried than she was before. Their escape plan isn't executed well. Lars and Vampirilla separate for a moment before they reunite and see something even deadlier before their eyes. Something they cannot use as a weapon. There it was, the chest burster, hatched out of Vampirilla making it a hybrid. If you thought xenomorphs couldn't get any deadlier, you were wrong. Just when they thought they had seen everything, they faced Nosferatu himself. The fourth comic issue ended on the best possible cliffhanger for its fans. The fifth begins with Nosferatu transforming into his ultimate form as he flies away with Lars and Vampirilla. Undoubtedly, Lars is terrified about being flown by yet another vampire, but Vampirilla is quick to reassure him that this is better than being killed by a xenomorph vampire hybrid. Once they escape the hybrid, Vampirilla communicates with Nosferatu, asking him whether or not he is okay, because transformation like that it cannot be easy. She also speaks their own language, which he refuses, but before they can continue, the hybrid presents itself again. As they escape, Vampirla shows Nosferatu some gratitude for helping them escape earlier, but he doesn't respond. Instead, he grabs Lars with pure intention of hurting him. Meanwhile, Sarah is furious and unwilling to talk to Tucker. Sarah tries to convince her fellow crewmate that Lars is still alive because she had just spoken to him, and Tucker is spreading misinformation and is in the wrong. Tucker tries to explain himself, but before he can, Sarah disconnects from him, unwilling to hear anything he might have to say about the situation. Tucker and his crew finally see the footage of a xenomorph killing their crew member, realizing that they hadn't killed them all through the toxic gas. As they try to digest this information, Vampirilla protects Lars from Nosferatu, convincing him that Lars is her creature, which causes Nosferatu to back down and apologize immediately. Nosferatu then explains that it feels like it's been forever since he has been asleep, and that on Mars the regular rhythms have been disrupted for his people. He was one of the first ones of his kind to go to Mars, and this planet had always appealed to him. It would also mean that he would be free from the ties that he had had on Earth and could live without the fear of immolation. He was eventually allowed to emigrate with the first of many waves of colonization, or so they thought. However, they ultimately ran out of food and were constantly on edge, but Nosferatu wasn't one of them. He still quite liked this red planet. He had requested a transfer to the water diviners, which meant finding the water and drilling down onto it. Although, 
They soon realized they weren't the first to do this. All their questions had been answered when several of their kind had been killed, and how it was just the beginning of the end. Vampirella and Lars listened to Nosferatu talk, with worry clearly written on their faces. But soon enough, Lars gets a call from Sarah. She tells him that Tucker has been lying to everyone, telling everyone that Lars was dead, and clearing Sarah's ship for the final approach. It is almost like it had been too long since the hybrid had appeared, and so it did. Only this time, it killed Lars, splitting him into two pieces. As Sarah watched her husband die, Vampirilla and Nosferatu escape the hybrid, but are soon met with armed crew members. All Vampirilla wants to do is have a chance to explain herself. The final issue of the series begins with Sarah's crewmates trying to console her after what she had just witnessed. Although Lars might be dead, Sarah wasn't going to back down and let Tucker come out of this, looking like they hadn't made any mistakes even if he wasn't the one who had killed Lars. While everyone is against Vampirilla, Sarah isn't and is trying to make sure that they don't just leave her to die. Meanwhile, Vampirilla is trying to convince everyone that she and Osferatu aren't the enemies and that they have been grossly misinformed about the situation. The situation, however, doesn't make Vampirilla look too good but she still tries to reason with them, which only angers Nosferatu. Before Tucker can attack them with his weapons, he is attacked by a xenomorph. Sarah, on her ship, is determined to execute her plan, which involves rescuing whoever is left and blowing up the entire place. Her crewmates tell her that she isn't thinking straight, assuming this might be part of her grieving process, but it wasn't. There is nothing that can stop her from executing her plan. Back at the station, Vampirilla tries her best to fight off the xenomorphs when several facehuggers crawl out. Finally, the humans and vampires try and get on the same side, trying to escape these vicious creatures. Nosferatu soon realizes that humans have built this base, and these beasts control it too, and Vampirilla soon tells him that they also have control over Mars and Earth. She apologizes for not telling them sooner. Soon enough, as they lose hope, Sarah calls them from her launch pad, asking details of how many people are there. After knowing that four are still alive, Sarah tells them that landing is too risky, and they will have to meet mid-air by using their short-range vehicle. They must make their way to the docking bay where the vehicle is ready to go. There are two humans, two vampires, and two rifles between life and death at this point. They take the shortest route possible and make their way to the docking bay, but the xenomorphs reach there on time, killing one of the crew members as the rest hurry for their lives. They get into the vehicle and take flight immediately, but the xenomorph is hot on their trail and catches up immediately. Vampirilla and Nosferatu both fly out of the vehicle, taking the pilot with them as they try to escape, but as they fly, Nosferatu says that he refuses to go the entire way. This just wasn't for him anymore, and his whole family was dead. He sacrifices himself, distracting the xenomorph as Vampirilla and the pilot get on board Sarah's ship. With that, Sarah drops the payload, destroying the entire base. As everything blows up in flames, Vampirilla tells Sarah that Lars was a good man and apologizes for everything that happened as they make their way back home. This comic series gives us an insight into how even humans, such as Tucker, can be an antagonist in the presence of something as vicious as a xenomorph, and how a blood-sucking vampire is a protagonist and the hero who tries her best to save Lars. Funnily enough, this wasn't the first franchise to explore the xenomorph and vampire hybrid, since Buffy the Vampire Slayer, in space, no one can hear you slay, features a xenomorph that was clearly born on a vampire and is killed when it is exposed to sunlight. So, if you want more of this hybrid, you know exactly where to go after you watch this video. Interestingly enough, we get to see another vampire and xenomorph hybrid in the comic Buffy the Vampire Slayer, in space, nobody can hear you slay. And if you liked our content, don't forget to like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one. Be safe. Thanks, everyone.